number three. So let's do that. Father God, I thank you that we can just take a moment, Lord. Uh, I know Vicky is disappointed she can't be with us today, and Lord, we thank you that you know, due to her safety, it was best to stay at home in Highfields. And Lord, uh, we thank you that she will have an opportunity to come and share with us again soon. So Lord, bless her, bless her work with GMP, Lord, and we look forward to her coming soon. And Lord, today as we open your word again, may we be encouraged, may we be challenged, may we be stretched. May we go, oh, that's interesting, I didn't know that. But Lord God, you are all present. You are all powerful. We thank you that we can be your hands and feet in this community. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have a Bible with you, we're looking at the book of Genesis. It's the story of Joseph. Uh, this morning's message is called, Sometimes Bad Things Happen to Good People. Have you been one of those <laughs> throughout your life? Sometimes they do. And we're picking it up at Genesis 39, verse 20. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favour in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison. And he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in everything, in whatever he did. Chapter 40. Sometime later, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their master, the king of Egypt. Pharaoh was angry with his two officials, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker, and put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard at the same prison where Joseph was confined. The captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph, and he attended them. After they had been in custody for some time, each of the two men, the cupbearer and the baker, the, king of, the baker of the king of Egypt, who were held in prison, had a dream the same night, and each dream had a meaning of its own. The life of Joseph. For us, it speaks to us that we need to be people of character, be people of faith, be people of trust, be people of wisdom and obedience. The life of Joseph speaks of these things, for it is a glimpse of who we strive to be. As Christian men and women, as the church of God here in this place. That we will be people of faith, of trust, of wisdom and obedience. Joseph's in prison. Now we all know that he shouldn't have been there, but he is. Because sometimes bad things happen to good people. And sometimes nothing seems to happen to the bad or evil people, amen, <coughs> who appear to get away with murder. I'm sorry, but we're not excluded from hardship. Bad things happen in, uh, have happened in your life, have happened in my life. I've known disappointment, betrayal, loss, heartache, hurt. And I'll be confident to say that many of you have as well. What do we do? Joseph's in prison. The Hebrew word that's used for prison means a hole. Hey, Joseph was in a hole. This is probably not like our prisons today. Probably a black hole. Yes. <laughs> Dark, dirty, smelly, disgusting. Life now would be hard for him. Life would be hard for Joseph. Joseph's belief system would have been challenged. 
Joseph would have been taught that good comes to the good and evil comes to evil. Maybe thought, why me? I did nothing wrong. I ran from her advances. And look, here I am. Lied about. Accused of things that I didn't do. As we minister and as we care for people. As we help people out. As we do good to others. We may find that at times we might be repaid with evil or very little thanks. Or we may not see much change in the life of those that we are helping, but we persevere because we care about them as a person. We may even ask ourselves, why did I care? Why did I bother? Why did I reach out? Why did I help? Why do I continue to be good? Let us be careful. Don't stop caring. Don't stop helping. Don't stop ministering. Even when your good isn't repaid with what you expected. Don't become cold. Don't become hard. Don't become cynical. Throughout my life of ministry, I've come across some of those people. Sadly, some of them are now not involved in church, not involved in ministry, not involved in Christian leadership, and they're cold, and they're hard, and they're cynical, and I wonder to myself, how on earth did you get there? Because I knew you before, but now look at you today. Up on the screen there for us, Galatians 7, sorry, Galatians 6, 7 and 9. Do not be deceived. Magic, you know, appears in a minute. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. It's not moving. Oh, lovely. Or is it moving? I don't know. Galatians 6, 7 and 9. There's help at hand. Fear not. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let's not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time you will reap a reward, a harvest, if we do not give up. Don't give up. You will reap what you sow. Don't give up. You sow good, so that is what you will reap. Things may not be the best now, but let us be people who have patience and faith. Oh, look, hello. Lovely. Have faith in God to look beyond your current circumstance and have confidence in His Word, have confidence in His promises, have confidence in His plan. You have shown, you have sowed goodness, you have sowed kindness, so that is what you will eventually reap. The seed is in the ground. The seed is in the ground. Up on the screen there, Joseph's dreams must have seemed a long way away. He's sitting in a prison. How would these dreams come to pass? That, that he would be exalted and his family would come and bow before him. His dreams must have seemed far away. Where's your dream today? Things you, that God laid upon your heart. Things that he's called you to do. Things God wants your life to stand for. Hopes and dreams you have. Embrace them. Walk in them. Maybe they seem far off today, but don't let go. Hang on tight. Be a person of faith and hope and prayer. For God has the power to bring those dreams to pass. He will fulfill his plan for us. It will come to pass. Let us not let go. Friends, Joseph's dreams will come to pass if you know the story exactly the way that God had shown him. Let us hold on. For it gets closer every day. Joseph stayed faithful. Be encouraged today. 
God looking, is looking after him and God is looking after me and God is looking after us. We just need to have the patience. There's an interesting verse in Psalm 105 and up there on the screen. It speaks of Joseph, the psalmist writes, He set a man before them. Joseph sold as a slave. They bruised his feet with shackles. His neck was put in irons till what he foretold came to pass. Till the word of the Lord proved true. And the second slide has the King James Version. He sent a man before them. Even Joseph was sold for a servant. Those whose feet they hurt with feathers, he was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. In verse 18 it talks about being laid in iron. If we look at the original Hebrew text there, that phrase sort of literally means that iron or strength entered his soul. Iron came into Joseph's soul, a strength, a perseverance of character. All that happened to him, all that he went through, iron entered his soul. Joseph made an important decision that nothing was going to shake him or move him from his faith in Almighty God. Yes, his brothers sold him, wanted to kill him. Yes, he was rooted, wrongly accused and so he's ended up in prison. But his mind was focused. His emotions were intact and let iron enter our soul today. A strength of character, a life committed to Jesus Christ. We will not be moved, we will not be shaken, we will not be distracted, for we are stepping forward with faith. Now Potiphar assigns two prisoners to Joseph, to his care, and he looks after them. For God's favour was on his life. Even though he was in need, he helped someone else. When you and I help others, it lifts us out of our hurt and out of our pain and out of our need. Because we care for someone else. On the screen there, Genesis chapter 40, 5 to 7. Each of the two men, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were being held in prison, had a dream the same night. And each dream had its own meaning. When Joseph came to them the next morning, he saw that they were dejected. So he asked Pharaoh's officials, who were in custody with him, in his master's house, why your, why your face is so sad today? Joseph was concerned for these men. He knew that they weren't themselves, so he said, hey guys, what, what's going on? What's happening? Later, Joseph would help the great nation of Egypt as five a long famine. And today he's going to help two of Pharaoh's officials. <coughs> when you are faithful over little, God will make you ruler over much. Joseph faithfully looked after these men in prison, and God made him ruler of the most powerful nation on the face of the earth. He wants to do the same thing for me and you and us as a church. Be faithful over the little and God will make you rulers over much. As we continue to read in Genesis 40 verse 8. We both had dreams, they said. But there's no one to interpret them. Then Joseph said to them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me your dreams. So the chief cut cupbearer told Joseph his dream. He said to him, In my dream I saw a vine in front of me, and on the vine were three branches. As soon as it budded, it blossomed, and its clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes, squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup, and put the cup in his hand. This is what it means, Joseph said. Three branches are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your position, and you will be put and you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand, just as you used to when you were his cup bearer. But when it all goes well, 
with you. Remember me and show me kindness and mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of this prison. I think that's a fine request. When you get back to all the glory and all the splendor, hey, remember little Joseph, this young bloke who told you your dream and get me out. I was forcibly carried off from the land of the Hebrews and even here I've done nothing to deserve being put in this dungeon. When the chief baker saw that Joseph had given a favourable interpretation, he said to Joseph, I, I, too, I too had a dream. And my head were three baskets of bread. In the top basket were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh to eat. But the birds were eating them. And out of the, the basket... They were pecking at them, and out of the basket, out of the basket, on my head. Okay, mate, lay it on me. Give me the good news. I want a great interpretation of my dream. And Joseph says, this is what it means. Three baskets of three days, and in three days, Pharaoh will lift off your head and empower your body on a pole. Isn't this fantastic? And the birds of the air will eat your flesh. Not to mention there's a pole stuck up. You birds will eat your flesh as well. Probably not what he'd hoped for. Are you with me? Anyone awake today? Praise God. Yeah. Now. Oh, hello. Love a good story. That's probably. Okay. It's me. Now, third day was Joseph's birthday. Yes, it as well. Pharaoh's birthday. The fucking yeah, three, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> now the third day was Pharaoh's birthday. Can you imagine that? Wouldn't that be expected? Anyone want a bit of zebra? <clears throat> Camels, elephants, gold, dancers, splendor. I'm oh, just filling in the blanks for you. He had a great feast for all his officials. He lifted up the heads of the chief cupbearer and the chief baker. In the presence of his officials, he restored the chief cupbearer to his position, so that he once again put the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he impaled the chief baker, just as Joseph had said, to them in his interpretation. That's the bit there. It's hard to swallow. The chief cupbearer, however, did not remember Joseph. He forgot him because sometimes things don't go the way we expect. Possibly not what Joseph had hoped for. We see here another quality in Joseph's life. He told the truth even though some of it wasn't good news. Let's not be scared of speaking the truth. Even though it may be hard for someone to hear. One guy, great story. Back you go. Another one, death is knocking at the door. Verse 14, remember me. Verse 23, he forgot him. Bit hard to swallow. I read this the other day. Things we've learned from children. A three-year-old's voice is louder than 200 adults in a crowded restaurant. If you hook a dog leash over a ceiling fan, the motor is not strong enough to spin a medium-sized dog around the room. Take note. Play-Doh and microwaves should never be in the same sentence. The spinning cycle on the washing machine does not make worms dizzy. It will, however, make cats dizzy, and cats can throw up twice their body weight <laughs> when dizzy. Apparently, a magnifying glass can start a fire on an overcast day. Oh, these children are just fantastic, aren't they? Always look inside the oven before turning it on. Plastic toys don't like ovens. <laughs> Certain Lego blocks will pass through the digestive tract of a four-year-old. Take note, certain Lego books. Friends, sometimes bad things happen to good people. People may fail us. Situations may be out of our control. 
But God will not fail you and God will not fail me. And as we finish today up on the screen there, put your trust in God, not man. Hold on to the faithfulness of God. It's His nature. When things seem hopeless, have patience and faith. And we've all known that one, haven't we? Maybe you're still in the middle of your patience and your faith. Life will be hard at times, unfair and stupid. Amen? Say to yourself, I will not quit, I won't break, I won't be destroyed. People may have mistreated me, forgotten me, but I'm standing strong and faithful and hanging on to my faithful God. For He is bigger than me and bigger than the situation and He will get me through. Let His grace abound. He is my deliverer. He is my fortress. He is where I run to in times of need. Praise God. Amen.